All right, today we're gonna go check out another Epic Studio setup, this time in an old house south of Austin, Texas with my good friend, Danny Reich. Danny is a composer, a multi-instrumentalist, an audio engineer. He has this really amazing studio setup with just outstanding collection of gear littered throughout this old house. And I know you guys are gonna love this video. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not, hit the like button on this video. I had a ton of fun hanging out. I know you guys are gonna really enjoy this walkthrough. So you might as well subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I haven't said that in a while. Feels like a good time to say it. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of Danny's setup, some of the stuff that resonates with you. I mean, it's literally, there's so much cool stuff. Links to Danny as well. If you wanna follow him and reach out to him, uh, see the projects he's working on, uh, inquire for rates and stuff. I, actually, I think he has two studios, one in Austin and one in Los Angeles. Busy guy. Also, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and all the studio tours. Recently picked up this console here, the Trident 6824 channel. It's amazing. And in testing it and trying a bunch of different ways of working on it, I wanted to try some music that felt appropriate for the console. So I just picked up the Vox AC30 head only and a Gibson Les Paul. This is like, this is a big deal. I mean, I'm not like a session guitarist or anything, but when I plugged that Les Paul into that Vox, it was like the sound that I've always wanted. Absolutely amazing rock and roll guitar tones. Can't wait to make a video showing you getting those sounds, using the console, it's all gonna be awesome. I have links to all that stuff and everything else in the studio, pretty much. Link down in the description, affiliate links, it's a great way to support the channel. So yeah, thank you Sweetwater, thank you guys for watching. We got a bunch of new subscribers lately. Uh, welcome to the channel, lots of studio tours on Mondays, every other Mondays, something like that. And then some bonus videos throughout the week. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Yeah, I think that's about it. Let's go check out Danny's studio. Welcome. Yeah, dude, thank you. I'm Danny Reich, this is Good Danny's, it's my studio. Yeah, I guess it was 2015 or 16, um, I started looking for new studio spaces. The, uh, the studio I'd been in for 10 years in Austin was right downtown and with all the uh, development and tech boom, creatives found a bunch of little tiny towns right outside of Austin to uh, you know, be able to still work and live affordably to spend time on their art. And uh, some friends of mine moved down here a few months before I did and found this space. I came down, I looked at it, and after 10 years of being in the old place, I signed a lease on the place that day. How, how old did you say This it is? house is from 1909, um, oh. although, I think that's probably a much smaller version of this house. And yeah, it's probably been expanded or whatever. It has, yeah. In fact, I had the family that lived here for, I wanna say they were here for like 40 years. They came knocking on the door about a year or two ago. No way. Yeah, and had pictures of this place in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And uh, this woman, her father was actually a, was into ham radio. So the room that is currently our vocal booth was his little ham radio room. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, I've got pictures from it. It was kind of amazing to see, but there's some, there's some audio, there's some tube, tube gear kind of that's been hanging around this place for a long time, so. Well, this is a cool little room here. We're yeah. kind of at the front of the house and you have all of these wonderful old keyboards yeah. and synths set up. Yeah. And I noticed you have it all routed, so everything's locked. Everything's always live. Yeah, yeah. We like to work quick, kind of build songs in a in a like creative fashion, where every color in the crayon box is kind of like ready to be thrown in if you want it. Yeah, you know, even that that little bit of time of getting a keyboard off the shelf and uh, you know talking about what kind of sound we're doing. I, it's like we just don't have extra time to burn. I would rather have people just jump in and start inspired. playing around. Yeah, and, and get inspired. There is something about having everything sort of up and running that immediately like the wheels start turning like oh my god this sound you know this could be perfect for our you know you just if you just leave a few things up for people to discover the happy accidents are yeah you know more likely to happen and i'm all for sort of curating and trying to encourage all the happy accidents there's something visceral and the tactile aspect and feeling like you're sort of more connected with an instrument. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, that that is very inspiring. I mean, I'm a musician. I come to this from being a musician first, so I guess this is sort of like a musician studio in that regard. As you mentioned, this is sort of a guitar and key zone in here. Oh yeah, you have a lot of fenders here. I have no fenders. Uh -huh. This is uh, blasphemous, but uh -huh. I have on my wish list a Princeton and a Del 
a deluxe reverb, the 64, yeah. whatever, hand-wired one. I don't know, I don't know anything about amps, but yeah. I do want some nice, clean, you know, classic sounding amps, For sure. obviously, yeah. the story of Fender, but. Yeah, in particular, I love small amps because they just record really well. I love the Princeton's, probably, that is my favorite guitar amp of all time. We've got the brown one back there. Yeah. Which, if you just dime that thing, it's full on crazy horse. It's just super compressed and sounds, sounds amazing. Um, the black face is a little more of the, the rock machine, but. Sick. Um, yeah, we, we absolutely love these. I, I've also found that just having a complement of really cool amps, mm -hmm. um, people come in with gigantic J Masses sized pedal boards all the time. There's one sitting out there right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's amazing when you have someone just plug a guitar straight into an, like a really good tube amp. Yeah. They're like, oh. Yeah. Maybe you don't need all of the. Maybe you do, but yeah. oh yeah, but, straight into the amp. Yeah, but yeah. that moment where you're like, when was the last time you just plugged your guitar straight into like a great amp and sat in front of it and turned yeah. it up? It's maybe you don't need six gain stages of noise inducing, tone sucking, whatever to get it there, you know. <laughs> and then I want to point out this mic you have here because you have yeah. one mic out for the amps, and this is a mic that I don't see often, but yeah. I love that mic. It's a BK5. Is that all old RCA? It's an RCA. Yeah, it's a ribbon mic. Those were designed to record ex uh, extremely high SPL. They were made for the film industry to record like, you know, gunshot sound effects. Things were, yeah. you know, maybe more fragile ribbons couldn't handle. So they're actually great for drums and guitar amps. You're not gonna, they're not, you know, you're not gonna blow it by just putting in front of a ripping amp. All right, cool. So key room, guitar yeah. amp room. Typically you throw someone in here. Do, do you put musicians in here? I do sometimes, yeah. I mean, we've got the we've got the B3 back here. So if, if someone's playing, we'll just throw headphones up and um, yeah. yeah, people are in here playing. Um, this week we're doing the score for the Halo video game. Which is going to be it's just all it's all ripping guitar. So we'll definitely have we want people in here for trying to get the feedback and all yeah. that. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. You know, really make it rip. If we're doing not feedbacky halo epic ripping guitars, people are usually in the control room, we just run a line in here. So this is closest to our sort of main road here. So we kind of put all the loud all the loud stuff and DI stuff kind of ends up in here because it yeah. doesn't really affect anything. Yeah, sure. And then as we go further deeper back and uh, things get quieter, and that's where we do vocals and acoustic guitars and right on. stuff. Yeah, let's check it out. I'll sure. follow you. Yeah. So this is our control room. This is kind of Grand Central Station. Now all this stuff in here, you've just collected over the years as a musician. Is a combination of people's stuff, or this stuff How is all, all yeah. This is this is all my gear in here, and then I have a mix room in LA where the rest of my gear lives. More of the mix centric stuff. This is uh, we do a lot more tracking here. But um, yeah, this is all mine. This is, uh, this is you know, this is one guitar pedal at a time since I was 10 years old with allowance money. You yeah. Know? This is, this is uh, just a lifelong thing of Obsession. collection. I mean, there's, there's pedals here I have that I, I have actually had since I was 10. The big muff that we're using on the Halo session, I bought new at Guitar Center, and I <laughs> guarantee you it is considered vintage on reverb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That tells you anything about how old I am, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, this has been this has been kind of a lifelong uh, pursuit, and I come come to I'm a drummer myself. I've, I've oh, played sick. in bands for years, toured, and uh, yeah. So essentially, this is all really from the core, kind of grown out of my desire to be able to make my own music, record my own bands, start recording your friends' bands, mm -hmm. your friends' bands tell their friends' bands, and it kind of just kind of all bloomed from that. It looks like a lot of stuff, but it's been. 25 years, so. Uh, we have kind of like a big live open room where the control room's in the room with musicians. We like working that way because it's uh, kind of immediate and visceral. And uh, and honestly, everyone, you spend 80% of the time in the control room, so it's nice to have the, the big room for for the band to hang. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is sort of the main console right here. Sure. My uh, sort of workflow over here is uh, very much based on normaling a lot of gear that I use all the time so I don't have to patch. It's super quick to um, just throw inputs into Pro Tools or to the tape machine. I use, this is kind of like the tracking side of the of this mastering desk. A uh, bunch of 500 series pre's that are normaled in the patch bay to these each of these EQ's that you see below. So I kind of think of these as channel strips here. These are kind of our go-to drum front end uh, 
AMLs into the 2254s, CAPIs, Avetis, uh, APIs, SSL, all the all the fun stuff. Like 10 channels here, right? Yeah, 10 at the top that are each normal to each of these. So That's for amazing. this week, um, I mentioned we're working on the Halo score. Um, I'm playing drums on that. So this is our, this is kind of our main front end for kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, rack floor, overheads that normal to these corresponding pre's, which we've kind of put in the positions that we, you know, it's kind of like little bespoke channel strips, essentially. Yeah. Um, I come from like the console world. I grew up on working on consoles and tape, and uh, I just like having stuff normaled where it's, you know, I think about it like like just Makes having like a little too. console, like yeah, a little yeah. sidecar. There's more front end over here, and it's kind of the same idea. Everything's pre's normal to EQs. What are these weird green things here? Yeah, the green, uh, this, this came out of a console that is actually, it's like deeply personal for me. This came, this was the console, um, at the studio that I came up in, in Dallas, which is called Summit Burnett Studios. Uh, it's where Bob Wills recorded all his records. Rolling Stones did Sticky Fingers Pre-Pro there. James Brown recorded there. It's wow. huge. Two echo chambers. I mean, you could put choir and orchestra in that studio. Giant. Nine rooms in the facility. Holy. So I came up as a tape op, sitting in the corner by the tape machine. Um, but yeah, this was the console in the studio for about 25 years. And, um, it's based on the Melkor 1731 op amps, and uh, which is kind of like the predecessor to the API 2520. Really special piece to be able to have this kind of like piece of personal history for me. Yeah. Uh, the Echo Send was modded to be a, a, an output fader, so you can hammer the input and have some attenuation on the back Sick. end. Sounds really cool. How did you wind up getting? Yeah, that is a very bizarre story. Uh, a friend of mine who is a front of house. Uh, touring front of house engineer for my band, Other Lives. He um, just kind of casually mentioned that he like on a whim just bought these like very strange green preamps. <laughs> and I was like, huh, were they like from a console? He's like, yeah, it's like this crazy, like super ugly for Micah green console. I was like, <laughs> are you kidding? Do you have a picture? And he pulled it up and I was like, I cannot believe you ended up with these. And I told him the story and he was like, Oh, well, you know, these have to be yours. Yeah. So yeah, That's they got great, they got man. handed down. Thank you, Dave Gomez. Actually, one of the original engineers from Summit Burnett came down. He's based in Austin. He came down and came to visit to come take a look. And he's, he, he definitely teared up a little bit yeah, when he yeah, saw yeah. those. He's like, I can't believe these still exist. And then I just noticed you have these uh, 500 radials here for inserting the well you so you get pedals and then for the space echo right yeah we we love tape echoes we love using pedals on tracking and for mixing um so it's really handy to be able to just have those kind of keyed up um we have all of our effects normaled in uh pro tools so uh, there's uh, 24 outs over here that just are normal to all the reverbs tape echoes to the extcs and yeah. that means we can kind of work in pro tools with analog stuff and be able to just kind of almost think of it like a plug-in. Yes. Um, it's just as quick. Just throw up a send and throw up a return track and print it. And uh, and then it's nice because you go into a mix and you've already got all these cool effects printed and, you know, nice stuff to play with. Pedals are also incredible now. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's stuff that like this Death by Rooms or the Empress Reverb. There's There, there are sounds that those things do that no plug-in. I, I, nothing can touch that. There's just, I mean, it's like high quality studio effects and pedals now. Really, it's ultimately about efficiency. So we can just work quick, use all this stuff without it being a hindrance. Yeah. Because analog is, it takes time and it's more effort and you gotta patch stuff and you can do all that stuff. I'm just basically trying to com combat all of our own laziness. Yeah. Then a hundred times I pull up a Space Echo plug and I'm like, like looking at one right next to me, I'm like, come on, you go. I have to just, let's just make it to where I cannot be lazy, where it is actually just as easy to pull up the plug-in. You're doing a lot of film stuff, um, which all the film guys I know uh, have lots of toys laying around and I noticed. Yeah, it's good. It's good to just, it's also just good being in here just to be inspired and it's, it's, uh, it's just fun to have all the stuff kind of like at your fingertips. Yeah, I just did the, I just mixed the Disney Peter Pan score. Um, Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Hart was the composer, uh, former bandmate of mine. And uh, what else? I did an A24 doc in November on smooth jazz. Really good. Uh, it's coming out soon. 
And uh, Daniel and I are actually doing another A24 HBO thing for a Rashida Jones show this uh, spring. Uh, kind of Black Mirror-y thing. So, and then, yeah, I mentioned we're doing Halo this week, so. You got yeah. NDAs on any of those things? Uh, I think I'm actually allowed to talk about all of those, but okay, uh, yeah, there's there's definitely some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's <laughs> some cool stuff, some other stuff. For sure. And Most then a uh, quick projects. shout out to Max here. Yeah. Max uh, helping running the show. Max, the more than helping. Max and I have been working together for almost 10 years now. Max keeps me from uh, getting lost in my own self-indulgent spider web of insanity by staying on task and being <laughs> so organized. Yeah, we would get pretty much nothing done here without Max, so. Good job, Max. This is kind of like a big flex room. We use this for horns, strings, uh, drums sometimes in the room out here. This week we're doing drums in the booth, leaving the door open and just using this room, just miking the room as a, just as a sound. We've got actually got three stereo pairs of different room mics. Whoa. Some are being crunched, some are kind of clean, some are kind of wide doing a fast reflection. Yeah. Um, the coals we actually are throwing reverb on the room mics, which gives the illusion of a bigger space. But uh, yeah, that's really cool because we can get all the tight drum sounds in the drum room here, but then still have the, you know, all the breadth and width and depth from being able to mix in. And then there's some more keys and stuff in here. Farfisa, VIP 600, and the Elotron in here. I noticed you got the, the Furman boxes all around. I do, yeah. Yeah, those are old school and they work great. I am not a fan of the mixers where you have like 16 channels and everyone can pan and EQ everything. Yeah. I have, uh, I've noticed that musicians can have a hard time figuring out what's going on when there's too much control. Analysis paralysis. A little bit, or you're just like trying to navigate this thing and it's got this weird thing that you have to hold and then that selects and becomes a pan. And you know, monitoring people, uh, for all of the cool gear in here, musicians experience of working in here, pretty much all comes down to how it felt to have headphones on. Yeah. So yeah, um, we like to streamline and simplify that. Um, We've been using these boxes forever. I, they're like kind of old school, but they just work and there's not too much control. We used to do all the day trotter sessions back in the day. We had all these crazy acts coming in. Lizzo, Ed Sheeran, the animals, um, the zombies, uh, Counting Crows, all these, Mac DeMarco, huge, huge people who come through and everybody commented on how much they love the monitoring. Which is funny because it's just a simple, it's just a little Furman box, but really what it means is if we're all listening to the same mix and the mix is good, yeah. then everyone can hear everything. Uh, should we check out the drums? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This is my playland because I'm a drummer and uh, I end up playing on a lot of records that I work on and playing on the Halo score this week. So um, we've got like a little monitor over there mirroring our Pro Tools screen, which is great for me to be able to run my own stuff. And, uh, and uh, it's just like a really good workflow thing. CNC kit up this week, my favorites, Istanbul cymbals. Those hats are so dark, they look like the yeah. digital drum set hats. Those are my faves, that's, <laughs> that's my, those are my favorite touring hats. Actually, both these crashes and th that pair of hats are specifically what I tour with with other lives. But I mean, you can see there's probably 50 cymbals back there. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I actually used the Joey Warnker ride on the Halo stuff. I just put this gnarly trash cymbal up last night to do some cymbal swells. All kinds of percussion toys. We, I mean, you mentioned the film score stuff. It's just, it's how you make creative records. Yeah, kind of a standard close mic setup. We've got the 67 over the shoulder. Sometimes we use the Coles as overheads. We wanted more detail in the overheads for this session, so we're using small diaphragms. Coles are in the room. Uh, 67's kind of for all for character. We're using that that TG1, the uh, Chandler on that to get the nice oh, Beatlesy yeah. drum pump. And then uh, RCA KB2 right here, the paintbrush RCA. That's what replaced the 44 BX and RCA's lineage. So it's oh. actually it's got a long ribbon motor like the 44. It's huge bottom end. Um, which is great for like a drum kind of mono, just get all the bloom and kind of low tone. Yeah, so off the off the main room, we've got another, this is kind of like the tightest, driest, quietest room in here. Um, we do acoustic guitars, vocals, anything that needs to be kind of dead is in this room. Sometimes drums, if we're going for a oh, more yeah. Fleetwood Mac thing, it's really cool to put a drum kit in here. We have this crazy Hungarian folk instrument called a cimbalam. I think it's actually pronounced cymbalom in Hungarian though. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's the sound on uh, that Lalo Schifrin album that Portishead famously sampled and made a lot of their first record out of loops from. It's uh, the Sour Times 
sound is actually one of those things. B15, we're using on the Halo thing this week in here just for isolation. I've seen a 441, but I've never seen a black one. Yeah, those are interesting. It's, I think, called Black Star. It's like a 441U. It is slightly more desirable, apparently, because it doesn't have the filter circuit. Okay. Um, there is a presence lift on it. Some people like these a little more. Great dynamic mic. If it's, Hitler. generally speaking, if we're not using the 441 on bass, it's often gonna be the 67, because it just gives you sure. everything. If you want the full picture, it's really nice. Vibraphone, love uh, love throwing a vibraphone on a bridge. Really nice, super dreamy. Get these little. Whoa. Got some mallets somewhere. It's also really fun to, you can bow these things and. Yeah, really cool, <laughs> really cool. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah. I've never seen the motor, like the thing spin yeah. before. Yeah, that's where the actual, and it's uh, it's kind of got a little little mechanical thing over here that ch you can change where this, it's sort of like a changing the your record speed from 45 to 33. It's yeah. got little different mounts to put it on that changes the speed. Fun, dude. Also just like a really nice room to be in for vocals. There's this window you're looking at in this giant field out here and it's just a, Kind of a good zone for people to feel cozy in. Yes. It's quiet and just Rides feels, and it feels, yeah, exactly. It feels really nice in here. And uh, ultimately, I mean, I love the gear. I love the, all this stuff, but the feeling of the space is kind of, that's kind of like all that really matters. Yeah. You know, people feel, Amen. feel good. Place you want to be. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, we do have a, like a little guest room. We have a lot of people come in and travel and work with us from all over the place. And uh, we can put people up here, which is, Oh, that is really nice. nice look, yeah, man. very handy. We've got a spare tape machine tucked back here to keep. It's having a having a vintage tape machine from the late '60s oh, is. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like having a Jaguar in your garage. You kind of got to have <laughs> two of them to keep one running at all times. Yeah. And then yeah, my favorite my favorite piano. It's ironic that we have uh, a hundred year old Steinway in the other room, but this is actually. This upright gets used nine times out of 10. It's a Baldwin upright and uh, wow. sounds beautiful. There are blue dragonflies on the soundboard back behind it, so it's always left mic'd up. That's kind of our general methodology. Leave everything mic'd up, leave everything ready to go. Yep. If you have an idea, let's just bounce over to it. We'll come right back to whatever we were doing. There's no, no time burned on it. It's just like, let me throw this idea down. So. Love that. Because the, the window on having those little, you know, you just hear like a little part in the back of your head. It's, uh, man, you've got like 30 seconds to get that down before it's gone. If you like yeah. step outside for a minute while I'm getting mics out, it's like, okay, what was it? Like, I don't know, I lost it. It was yeah. just like a little thing. I just, you have such a short window. The most essential thing in a studio is having lots of fun, weird stuff like art books and toys and puzzles and games to keep everyone busy with while I'm actually getting work done. Yes. Go yeah. check out some of the go stuff. Go play in the synth. Why don't you go put some headphones on? I can actually get some work done. <laughs> go, why don't you go read that uh, Brutalist Architecture book on the, on, the, <laughs> on the back patio for a little while. And then, really, yeah, we got a little kitchen cool. in here. Everyone can kind of like hang and eat. And this is where everyone, I mean, most of the time everyone's just hanging out in here. And, and then uh, uh, tell me about this stuff up here. These are cool. This is artwork for uh, compilations that I put out every year. It's Call it Good Danny's Good Friends. My friend Peter Dehart um, from a band called Brass Bed draws those. And uh, yeah, I put out a compilation. It's like all my favorite tunes we worked on that year, or maybe it's a film score cue, but um, really cool way to sort of encapsulate the year and, and uh, I don't know, kind of mark everything and just kind of celebrate all the work we actually do. It's easy to be, you know, we're so busy, we're just like, next thing, next record, next score, whatever. And uh, it's just a nice way to kind of like mark the year and, you know, and it's got cool artwork. We, uh, I used to do a South by Day party oh, cool. um, every year and that's when we release these out. I'd just hand, I'd, get, I'd print like 300 copies on CD and hand these out to everyone and have a bunch of bands play. And yeah, shout out to Peter for uh, making all this amazing artwork for these. Oh, uh, dude. Amazing. Yeah. So cool. I'm going to put a link to whatever you have. Is there an Instagram website or anything? Yeah, People can yeah. follow the stuff? Yeah, probably the best spot is Instagram. It's just at Good Danny's, G O O D D A N N Y S. Cool. And then, yeah, you can find my website if you search for me. There's a bunch of bunch of other stuff about me blabbing on about gear and workflow and creativity on the internet. So people can find me.
Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you guys for watching, and yeah. we'll see you in the next one.